Well, I'll be honest with you, like most electric cars, this one eh, kind of didn't have to exist. It was mandated by law in California, not by consumer demand anywhere. But let's see if a shotgun wedding can actually produce a happy marriage, in this case, between Toyota and Tesla, as we drive the RAV4 electric and check the tech. Okay, the big headline on this car, of course, is the fact that it's a Toyota with a Tesla powertrain. The other interesting story here is that this electric vehicle is not built on the latest RAV4, which is radically different, but on the outgoing, most recent RAV4. And of course, it's got a big old battery slung underneath it, which shows, if you look in the back, that you're not gonna have any impediment to cargo carrying or passenger space inside. Now, spot one of these guys by the different face. Obviously, it's almost grillless. Electric badges abound all around it. You might spot the little lower or ground clearance, uh, it's like an inch or so, maybe two inches, depending where you measure it, and the fact that you'll probably be standing in California if you buy one, because that's the only place they're sold. Talk about screens, we got plenty of them here. One, two, three. All LCD, no gauges, no dials. The one in the center, the instrument panel, pretty basic electric stuff. You've got range and charge level on the left, along with that arc that tells you if you're dipping into power or regenerating. In the middle is your speedometer, odometer, gear position, selector indicator, but there aren't really any gears, it's a different thing. And that big blue ring says you're in normal mode, that guy turns to red when you're in sport mode. We'll talk about that in a moment. On the right is a multi-display, you roll through that with this button on the right, and it's going to give you a driving range indicator, efficiency, trip efficiency, eco coach, you get the idea, CO2 reduction, all these things that are electric powertrain oriented. That's the IP. Now let's go to the climate control. This is all new for Toyota. Notice as I go through temperatures, it kind of rolls them through. Cool little animation there as I raise or lower the temperature. And that screen is all of your climate control system, including level of eco-ness. Now this means I can go to four different settings of how aggressive the climate system is. Eco low, it's gonna bias a little more toward power savings. Eco high, it's really gonna bias toward power savings. Personally, I'd rather that be figured out by the car. This is a little bit too much in terms of levels of settings for me to worry about, but we're at that kind of gimmicky era for electric, so I'm not too surprised. Okay, now to the main show. The big LCD here, now an 8-inch, so big they had to get rid of dedicated buttons. There aren't any. Everything is on screen now. Well, save for one. You've got a home button here. I'm surprised Apple hasn't sued them yet. That's just like on an iPhone or an iPod or an iPad. First off, they break up the media across an endless number of buckets. Radio is under here, which includes AM, FM, satellite, and HD radio. On those same tabs, you can go over to USB for a thumb drive or an iPod, Bluetooth streaming, auxiliary jack as well. Now you're into the Entune apps, which are still kind of class leading. Bing, Open Table, Pandora, Movie Tickets, iHeartRadio, and unique on this vehicle, a charge station map. That's where you're going to find out where the nearest charging stations are, if the damn thing would ever work, which it won't. Which brings us back to the navigation system in this car, which we've seen before on Toyota vehicles, except it's got a couple of different tweaks. First of all, here is a split screen with energy efficiency taking up part of the map if you want it to. But you've also got this EV menu down here, which will give you a range map. And this is kind of like a, a sonar around your current location that will show you in that big blue circle roughly how far you can go. As the crow flies, that's not the same as driving distance, before you are flat out of gas, hit it to round trip and duh, it cuts it in half. So they've woven a number of EV-centric features throughout the different screens. However, oddly enough, on the navigation map, you still have a set of POIs that include gas stations. Now, one choice on the sound system, as there tends to be in electrics and plug-ins, it's not going to be a huge power, big thumping multi-sub system, because that draws a lot of current. Instead, up here you've got this sort of persistent music icon that takes you to one of the annoyances on this vehicle. You have to go up here and go to this slider to get system volume. First of all, it's not very accurate. It's always laggy behind me. Same thing goes for tuning. There's no knob to tune through either kilohertz, megahertz, or satellite radio stations. You're going to miss that. And I wish they had a back button. So often I want a physical back button, not one on the screen that tends to be in different places at different times. Now, in terms of technology controls for the drivetrain, you've got a Prius-style shifter. It's an electronic selector. It doesn't move anything. Up here to reverse is going to get you into your rear camera, which is standard on the RAV4 electric. Neutral, drive, pretty simple. And then over here to B gets you additional regenerative braking or a drag braking for going down hills or long grades. Pretty handy. Here's your sport button. This actually increases the amount of torque, though not amount of horsepower available from the powertrain. We're going to talk about that in a minute when we get underneath the hood. Steering, of course, is 
all electric. There's no engine to drive hydraulics, and we'll see how that feels when we're out on the road. No paddle shifters because there's no transmission. This is a single speed in the Tesla style, a reduction gearbox, but there are no gears, synthetic or otherwise. Now about half of Tesla's secret sauce is here under the hood, the motor and its associated electronics. Let's talk about what the power is in this car. It's a very interesting story. 154 horsepower, you'd say that is not much for a big crossover, but the torque is what it's all about. This guy will have either 218 or 273 foot-pounds. Those are nice numbers. Why two numbers? Sport mode. Remember that button? If you're in normal mode, this guy has less torque and a lower top speed, 85. If you're in sport mode, the higher torque number and a higher top speed, 100 miles an hour. Zero to 60 on this guy is either 8.6 seconds or seven seconds flat. Again, sport mode makes a big difference. And of course, you're gonna peel off a lot of bit of range if you're lead footing it. Now, in terms of range and MPGE, the MPGE is relatively soft on this vehicle. It's a big one, 76 miles per gallon equivalent. Range is middle at 103, though Toyota says you may get as high as 113 if you're driving in normal mode. Now, just as that power plant's got a multi-tiered story, so does the charging side of the vehicle because you've got a couple of different charging modes. First of all, there's a normal mode that gets you a little lesser range, about 92 miles on a charge, they say, but it will prolong the life of the battery. Or there's an extended range mode that's gonna tax the battery a little more, and that'll get you 113 miles of range. Hence, the EPA middles it at 103, like I mentioned. Now, let's talk about charge times. If you've got the top charger, a 240 volt, 40 amp charger, you can do this guy up in four to five hours from pretty much dead flat. Again, that's standard or extended mode is the difference in time. If you've got a 240 16 amp, kind of the wimpiest of 240 circuits, you're looking at 12 or 15 hours. Now, here's the kicker. If you're on a 110 or 120 outlet, 44 to 52 hours to do a full charge. I mean, you'll forget you own this thing in that much time. So absolutely, it must be hooked up to a high current charger. That's gonna run you about 1600 bucks to have the Toyota approved one installed at your place. Okay, put her into drive, and immediately you hear that odd little noise that electric cars have to make up to, what is it, 22 miles an hour? Very space age on this one. But more importantly, what do you feel? And that's where, of course, electric torque just never fails. And this is a big boy at over 4,000 pounds, but it still moves effortlessly because of all that torque. I mean, I'm in normal mode now, and if I trounce it, hello, yeah, we got everything we need. Now, that's normal mode. If I put it in sport mode, it's, it's crazy fun. You heard that. <laughs> I mean, this car is just all torque. You've got some body roll because this doesn't have any kind of an active suspension. So, you know, it still tends to tip over a bit. But again, there's more weight down low to even fight that. Okay, a RAV4 electric is 50,006 or so. Um, EVs are always pretty stout. Do you knock off tax credits? Currently, that's 10,000 total. Federal and California, the only place this guy is sold. So we're down to about 40,000 or so, and there really aren't any options to add to go CNET style. Whether or not that price makes sense for you is gonna come down to a number of things, including whether you think the relatively limited range of 100 or so, and yet the broad utility of a crossover are pulling at cross purposes. That may or may not be the case, depending on how you intend to use the vehicle, but it could be a crux issue.